Hi, this video is about the AI wars and who will win it. And this article, I'll put a link to it below, um, ar ar argues that it's neither Google nor, nor OpenAI that is going to win it, uh, but actually a, a third group that I'll talk about in just a second. Um, and uh, let's, let's actually do it. It's a very long article. Let's actually do a summary of it real quick. Uh, and I actually had to split it into two parts to put it into GPT-4. But basically, the the main thesis is that open source is eating Google and OpenAI's lunch, and that they're going to it's going to just zoom past um, anything that OpenAI or or uh, Google can do, and that they might as well cooperate with them and, and collaborate with the open source community. Um, and they, they bring up um, like Chrome and Android like they did and become a leader in that and that allows them to have certain control over where things go or, or to take advantage of it and be a market leader essentially. So here's the second part where they go into some of the details. Um, uh, large models aren't capable, are, aren't more capable in the long run. Uh, um, I'm not sure how true this really is. I do think that there are some really small models that are showing, uh, you know, they're showing a lot of promise compared to the big ones. Um, and so, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't advantages to, to the to the large models or angles that, th that those are still needed. Um, data quality matters more than data size. I mean, this, is, this of course, um, and th what this does point to is something that I've said, I've talked about a lot, at least I think I have, and that is definitely very uh, important from a business angle for my business, and I think a lot of other businesses should be thinking like this, which is when you have um, a data set that's specific to specific, a specific use case or a target market, um, the quality of your data just goes through the roof and the uh, ability for you to train something that goes, re that does, goes really well, very inexpensively, um, is very high. I expect to see a lot of this. Open source is winning the competition. I I'm not sure that's true. Um, and I'm, I'll come circle back around to that. Google should embrace open source. I actually think that's not a bad idea, but again, I don't, I don't know if they need to do it. Meta is benefiting from the open source. Basically, the, the, the llama model from Meta is the one that was leaked, and that's where a lot of like the development has happened. And so as a result, what their argument is, is that Meta now can, if they want to, they can just kind of use their architecture to on top of what's what people are being made. So they're gonna benefit from the open source the most. I, I think it's a little bit of a tenuous argument um, to say that, but maybe, maybe it's true. And then they try to lump OpenAI in the same boat. Uh, let's see, there's this really funny comment. Let's see, where is it? Uh, there we go. Oh, in the end, OpenAI doesn't matter. They're making the same mistakes we are in their posture relative to open source. So um, I'm going to cover that because I think that's a, a kind of a key side point that is, neither here nor there that also, but at the same time, it's sort of like seems kind of bitter. And it's sort of like, well, we, we can't compete, therefore you can't compete. And I, I don't think that's accurate. I think OpenAI has demonstrated their ability to compete in this space much better than Google. And so, you know, they, I think that they have an advantage. But also, I think that there is a potential for OpenAI still to do some things that other, that just open source just can't do. I mean, they've got hundreds of people working on a very specific goal of creating AGI and improving these general models. Uh, I envision that some of these open source things, yeah, they might actually look at that and go, oh, that's a good idea. Let's let's integrate that. Let's improve our own models. So I think, you know, just in general with business, especially in tech business, you know, it's to say you need a moat to operate is, is kind of a, to me, a little bit lazy. Yes, sometimes you can get one with like a patent or something. Uh, but in general, I think you win in business um, by out competing and by staying nimble and by continually working to get to improve the business and to uh, and, and if you do that and you know you and you work on you know the business always getting better, getting better people, getting better technology, building you know being disciplined in the areas that matter. Um, I, I feel like there's gonna there's a lot of value vectors that. Google or OpenAI or smaller companies can find, and uh, you know even I, I, you know I personally don't mind like competitors to to my products. It's 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 fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna outcompete. I'm gonna try to outcompete, and if they if they do better, then you know more power to them. Um, and so you know I think that that is the healthier way to look at this. So this does seem a little better.
but let's circle back around. Like, I don't think they have to be open source. They could still be closed source and get a lot of value from the open source community and still do things differently than what the open source community can do um, with just what they have and, and, and their, their lead. But again, also going back, OpenAI has shown the ability to compete and Google clearly has not at this point in this space. And so, you know, don't lump OpenAI with you. Just because you're struggling doesn't mean OpenAI is going to struggle. Um, but let's let's circle back around to open source. There's a let's look historically. Has open sourced eaten the lunch of other companies? Um, let's say Windows versus Linux. Windows, you know, Linux didn't kill uh, Windows. It required a whole lot more technical setup to do Linux. Now maybe these, some of these models like GPT-4 for all, for all or maybe there's gonna be more like that where you just install and it doesn't require any technical setup. Um, but again, it, it, it really depends on the exact nature of those models and how well they work and a variety of other factors. Um, so we also have uh, Office versus Open Office. I haven't heard about Open Office in a long time. Wikipedia, I don't know if they had any direct competitors because um, Encyclopedia Britannica was already on the, you know, falling away and it was kind of natural that it was going to go away anyways. But Wikipedia is kind of a success story for o open source and I know there's a lot of other open source uh, stuff out there, but I don't think that just because there's good open source, I think it's a bit of a miss, it's a bad attitude, I think, to be honest, from whoever wrote this article uh, at, at Google. Because the the appropriate response to, isn't isn't like oh crap man we're just getting your eat, uh, oh no they're gonna beat us they're 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 zooming ahead and they're doing all these awesome things uh, to 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 kind of be like ah well we just can't win that is to me a little bit like mentally lazy uh, to be honest uh, but you know and just in business there's always going to be opportunities for you to find what I call value vectors and there's just an un unlimited possibilities and Google having all this cash and all this capital and all, the, all by, and all these people that are smart people, there's no reason they shouldn't be able to find, test and find a new value vectors, except for the fact that the bigger company gets, the kind of the harder it is to move. So maybe they're just too big to kind of change change course uh, quickly enough. But that again, that's, that's a, a little bit letting them off the hook because there's always ways that you can change course even with a big company if you're really committed to it and you really, you know, kind of take that kind of lean uh, company approach. Um, I did want to show this graph that they showed here, uh, which is always funny uh, when there's like an implied improvement rate, but basically, and I think this, I believe this is uh, uh, GPT 3.5. Um, and I found BARD to be very poor, but you know, they're saying that, you know, two weeks apart, one week apart, it's increasing pretty quickly. Uh, and you know there's some argument there i think that there is a space for open source and i do think that there's some a lot of awesome nerds out there working on solving um uh ai large language model or ai model problems or creative uh, creating new ideas that uh, new things new capabilities that ai models can do i think that's great i think that's wonderful I think that's great for everybody overall you know obviously with some downsides but mostly upsides and i think we can all benefit from it so uh, it, it, maybe there's a reason why this was internal because um, it, it's it, it, the article just again over and over again smacks of like uh, man oh it's so bad oh, why me why us and then a little bit of like speak for yourself <laughs> you know don't don't be pulling OpenAI into your own uh, problems I think OpenAI will be fine or at least they have a better chance of Google it seems at this point at least of competing in the AI model space oh, there's an interesting timeline at the end that I, I found I found to be pretty compelling of, of like they're trying to make the case of like how fast these models go so you know go to the end of the article and check that out and, uh, and I think that that would be it, it's kind of useful for you know this is moving very quickly and it makes a pretty strong case because the model the llama model was just was leaked just a few months ago so where will it be in a year you know where will the open source models be then my best guess is that OpenAI will still be fine they will continue working and their models will be better than everyone else's models because GPT-4 is, is, is better than everyone else's models right now by quite a bit. And you know that's their external model. Their internal models are always uh, uh, quite a bit ahead of what they're you know publishing uh, uh, publicly. So I think at least for a while now, they'll still have that huge advantage and um, have a moat, so to speak. Um, <laughs> 
really it's more that they're just out competing everyone else. It's not a moat, and nor should, you don't need a moat either. At the same time, I do think that the open source stuff is really great for innovation, for getting people and business people like myself to take on a model as, a, as like a base and then build off of it to build specific models or models with parameters or creative or features or whatever it, it, in, in whatever angle we want to go. And I expect that a lot of new AI models, a lot of businesses to come out of this open source activity. So let me know what you think. Do you, do you agree? Uh, read the article or read the summaries or whatever and let me know what you think. Please like if you like this video and subscribe if you want more awesome AI content. Have a great day. Bye.